how to animate sprites in Phaser. Step one, import your sprite sheet into your project folder. Step two, load the sprite images in the preload method on the my game class. Call this .load sheet, passing in the nickname to reference the sprite sheet as a string in the file path. You can pass it as a string literal or a variable with the value of the string literal. Next, you will pass some sprite sheet data as an object. The object will indicate the frame width and height. The frame width and height is the width and height of each individual image in the sprite sheet, not the width and the height of the entire image. Step three, add sprites from the sprite sheet and assign it to a variable. In the create method, call this sprite function, passing in the x coordinates, y coordinates, and texture key, which in our case is 400, 300, and sheet. Let's assign this image to this dot player. Step four is to create animation objects from the loaded sprite sheet. This is the fun part. We're going to declare an animation for our scene by adding this dot image dot create function, passing in an object with data about our animation. We'll pass in a key to nickname the animation. We'll pass in frames, which we assign the value of this dot image dot generated frame numbers. We'll pass in the frame rate of 16 and a repeat value of negative one. Now returning to the frames property, we need to pass in some parameters. The first param being a string reference to our sprite sheet, which we nickname sheet. And next is the object with the key of frames and the value of an array of frames that make up the animation. So how exactly do frame works? On our screen is our sprite sheet in Figma. Each image is one frame. So this is frame one, two, and three, all the way up to 20 in our first row. Now here's the catch. Our longest row, row three, has 30 frames. So when you declare the frames in your phaser project by saying, hey, the walk animation is frames one through 20, and because it's JavaScript, it's frames zero through 19, then when you go to declare the run animation in row two, it won't be frame 20 that is the starting frame. It will actually be frame 30 because we are counting for the 10 placeholder slots that are invisible to the eye, but being accounted for by our computer. You can rearrange your sprite sheet so that there are no gaps in the grid, and I like to add visual cues declaring when an animation starts and stops for debugging purposes. And our code, the walk animation will be frame 0 through 19. Now to play the animation, simply call this.player.play, passing in the animation reference nickname walk and the boolean true. Go ahead and test that out. Something I like to do is to pass my animation object to a variable and pass the variable instead of the animation object in my this.animation create function. This is what the code base looks like. You can change the animation reference nickname to view different animations. That can Concludes our tutorial. In the next few videos, we'll cover character controls and particle effects in Phaser. Like and subscribe for more game dev and design content.